I want to talk about the Pixel 7 series phones. Surprise. <laughs> but there's something that I want to talk about, about Google strategy here. And it's funny because everything finally worked out in favor of the Pixel phones. And this strategy started, I think, two years ago when we got the Pixel 5. Google fundamentally changed how they were doing business. They were no longer chasing Samsung. They weren't, and I don't know if they were chasing Apple, but they certainly weren't chasing Samsung. They were already doing their own thing. And when they came on the scene, everybody liked what they had going on with the camera and a lot of diehard fans and a lot of people really caught on to the vanilla plain stock Android experience because things with TouchWiz, things with Samsung, things with LG, the user interface experience was just, well, quite janky, especially until One UI came along with Samsung. So there was a lot of stuff going on, and we had the rumors about two years ago, Google starting their own silicon, which of course showed up in the Pixel 6 with the Google Tensor 1. And here's the thing. Things finally went right with Google when it comes to the Pixel 7, 7 Series phone, 7 Pro, all that jazz. They started, and they expected, I think, that to happen with the Pixel 6. Maybe the marketing campaign people did. I don't know if the hardware people did. I mean, clearly, there were issues with the Pixel 6 when it launched. Google had to have been aware that it was basically like a three-quarter baked set of cookies. Like, it wasn't quite ready. But I think their original plan was push it out there, get the 6 out there. And I think they expected or hoped it would turn out the way the 7 did. So there was a lot of anticipation when the 7 came around because it had a lot to fix. It had a lot to live up to. It had a lot of things to make right when it came to the launch, and clearly they did. They also put facial recognition in there. That was a big thing, but I, I wanted, and I think they wanted to, of course, the Pixel 6 to be what the Pixel 7 is, and it just was not, but of course, the Pixel 6, especially after a year of software updates and patches and fixes and all that great stuff, is a significantly better device than it was. Had the Pixel 6 launched as it is now a year ago, I think the dialogue would be completely different when it came to the Pixel 6 phone. But that's not what happened. And it's really hard once a device comes out. You only get one launch. <laughs> like you can only not mess that up one time. It's like a first impression. Some people that already have value or see value and you might give you a second chance, but people who are turning their head for the first time to look at a phone like this, the Google Pixel phones, they're less inclined if you come up and you show on the scene and you're like, hey, we're here, we're cool, fanfare, great, phone launch, <laughs> fall on the face. And you've got people like MKBHD saying they don't recommend the phone. That doesn't help your brand. When the biggest tech YouTuber, especially the biggest one in the US is saying, yeah, I can't use this phone, it's too janky, it's having problems, I'm gonna keep using my S21 Ultra, that's kind of like, Okay, that's a lot of millions of people that watch his videos that are seeing, okay, this is not good and very fair. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with somebody. That's the great thing about the tech sphere, the tech spectrum of tech reviewers on YouTube. Uh, there's folks like me, then you there's folks like MKBHD, Mr. Mobile. There's all sorts of guys out there, different content creators, different flavors, different approaches on doing things. So... I, I don't have a problem with that. Some people can, as long as they're going out there, they're giving their honest thoughts and opinions on stuff, go for it. That's what we're here for, to add all the different colors and the different paintbrush strokes to the tech canvas so people can get a good idea of whether something is a good phone. Is it a good decision? Should I spend my money on it? That's why I'm here. That's why I started doing this in the first place. That's why I like the Pixels. I, of course, I like the other ones. I'm not going to ever say, no, you shouldn't go buy a Samsung. I mean, I just made a video saying don't buy the S22 Ultra right now because the S23 Ultra is almost here. Whenever I make a statement like that, it's usually there's some content there, there's some context, so you can get an idea of, okay, look, why would I trade this in now when I can wait five weeks from now and you'll probably get the same amount of trade-in value plus some Samsung credit and all sorts of other stuff, and you can get the new one. And as much as I love the S22 Ultra, I think it's the best Samsung phone they've ever made. I love mine. But the S23 Ultra is going to have the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2. So as much as if you believe in the Pixel phone, as much as you can see the difference between the Google Tensor 1 and the Tensor 2, I'm expecting a very, very similar trend and similar thing that happened with the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2, this next phone. I think it's going to fix the battery life. I think it's going to fix some of the power efficiency stuff. I think it's going to fix some of the heat issues. And that's going to make the S23 Ultra 
an even better phone than the S22 Ultra, which I love. It's good. I love. There's so many of these phones, and that's one of the reasons I like to cover so many phones because there's so much value at so many different levels. Now, it's not one of those things where it's a okay one phone that suits everybody's needs. We don't want that, especially you look at the the iPhone world. Yeah, you know, you're kind of locked in for forever. I know some people leave here and there, but very few people leave Apple Island. Uh, more people probably leave Samsung Island, but it's great to have other parties, other people to party. We've got OnePlus. We've, they've got their new phone coming out soon. You've got, of course, Samsung. You've got Google. I wish LG were still here. So there's a lot of different things you can choose from. I mean, heck, my favorite phone of the year, I made a video about it, the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. Definitely don't recommend it for most people, especially not at the $1,400, $1,500 price point. I mean, you could basically almost buy, I mean, you could buy like a Pixel 7 Pro and a Pixel 7 effectively for the same price as a Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. But... Everybody has different priorities, different prerogatives, different things they're looking for in a phone. But the great thing is, and Google is the one that's bringing this to the forefront, they're dispelling the belief that you have to have a $1,000 phone or more to have a high-quality flagship that has all these bells and whistles. I mean, money can't buy everything. And if it did, Samsung would definitely be number one on all the lists. But they're not. If you look at the best smartphones, you look at the best smartphone cameras, of course, best subjective here based off of need, price point, interest, operating system. A lot of folks could think the iPhone 14 Plus is the best. I mean, maybe. I'm sure there's somebody does. But most people probably can agree that the S22 Ultra is certainly not the best camera out there. It's very good. It's in the same category. And then you're like, okay, you're lumping in Audi. You're lumping in BMW and Mercedes. There's so many high-level premium phones. But then we look at underneath that, and we can also look at a different realm of very high-quality flagship performance phones that may not necessarily cost $1,200, but they bring the same level of quality and sophistication in many areas. And then guys like the Pixel 7 Pro, $899. It was on sale for $749 so recently many times the last holiday season. It's a really convincing thing. So much so that the rumors are even pointing to it's making Samsung have a hard time figuring out how they're going to price their phones. Because I think the jig is up. <laughs> of course, they're still going to sell the super expensive phones. But I think people are catching on. Look, the market is not good. The economy is not good. Globally, the supply chain stuff, the price increases on everything. Not a lot of folks are probably lining up to go buy a $1,200 phone. Especially whenever Interstage left. You have phones like the Pixel 7 Pro that offer so much value for so much less. And you're also still getting three years of operating system updates, five years of security patches. So very competitive, very consistent, very good phone, and number one rated smartphone camera in the U.S., several hundred dollars cheaper than the S22 Ultra and basically about $1,000 cheaper than the Fold 4. So not all about the dollars. Money isn't everything. Money can't buy you first place. I mean, maybe if they spent like 10 grand, they probably still could. But it's like, if you take a look at the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV, most people don't regard it as the best smartphone camera. The sucker's like $1,500 phone. Right, would most people go out and spend $1,500 on a phone? No. But they're probably a lot more inclined to go buy an $899 phone or even the Pixel 7 that came in at $599. And that's the thing. That's what Google's mission was, to establish themselves as a high-quality premium flagship phone that offers price, value, performance, top of the line camera, and they're doing it for pennies on the dollar cheaper than some of the big guys. And I think that's going to continue to be industry disrupting, but we'll see. So that's what I think. I think the Pixel 7 finally brought the strategy to fruition for Google. And I think they're bringing it to Samsung. I think they're bringing it to OnePlus and they're bringing it to, to Apple. And I think they're doing a good job at it, especially with the marketing campaign and the resounding positive criticism. I mean, these phones have been peer tested by a lot of different tech reviewers that are out there. And granted, yes, there's going to be onesies and twosies that aren't happy, but there are people with iPhones and onesies and twosies aren't happy. People with Samsung, you're never going to please everyone. But with what you get out there, the wide audience, and I think the positive feedback that most people have had with this phone, I think that it speaks volumes for what Google's finally been able to accomplish with their strategy. And that's great. So that's all I got in this video. If you have any questions or comments, please go to the comment section. I'll get back with you. If you've got one of these phones, I'd love to hear your feedback. Do you love your Pixel 7? Do you love your Pixel 7 Pro? What would you change for the opportunity? And do you think that the price is very convincing 
when it comes to other phones, like you compare it to the iPhone and you compare it to the top of the line Samsungs, because that's the big litmus test, I think. So like I said, that's all I got. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.